Hey guys, Gamma here. Uh, my first uh, real narrated video of Kerbal Space Program. I think I have one other out there of me doing a moon mission on an older version. Um, this is Tour de Kerbal. Uh, it will get you anywhere you want to go in the current .17 Kerbal system. It is completely stock. And I have no intentions of ever using mods. Um, I know a lot of people use MechJab and they can get there with smaller ships and they can get back and do all that. Uh, this is for the, the, the core gamer like me who just wants to play the game as it was released and uh, get places and, and do things. Uh, so it's it's pretty big, it wastes a lot of fuel because I'm not the greatest with orbital mechanics. Uh, so these outside stages burn away and then these outside stages burn away and you're left with the uh, the core space vehicle. Uh, these arrow spikes down here will get you uh, outside of Kerbin's influence uh, and that's the point which I start to uh, modify my orbits to go to other planets. Um, I don't know how to do the whole timing your launch angle and orbiting the planet and doing all that, but uh, I, I'm under the assumption that if you know how to use your fuel wisely, you could probably visit multiple planets with this uh, with this vehicle, but no problem. Well, let me load back up here and just show you its capabilities. Again, my only ever intent with this vehicle is just to go straight out of Kerbin's influence uh, into uh, an orbit around Kerbal, and then from there I figure out where I'm going to go and how I'm going to get there. Just try to launch that up real quick. Whenever my uh, system decides to load. So yeah, it's just a matter of uh, turning on the SAS. Throttling up. Releasing the rocket. And away we go. Alright, you'll notice the arrow spikes don't burn, and that's just because I couldn't figure out a way to properly fuel three fuel tanks while burning from four, or a multiple of four. Um, I might get around that in a future version of this rocket, but uh, as it sits, I have no issues getting out and going to even Jewel. I flew this to Jewel twice with no issue. Uh, there is a lander up top. Uh, it does work. You can use it to land on Duna. I've landed on Duna, and I landed on Eve. Uh, as a parachute, if you encounter a planet with an atmosphere, it works as well. Um, I did forget to stage this right. That'll be fixed in my uh, my upload, uh, so that we don't uh, deploy the parachute when we turn on that uh, that engine. I'm just uh, wasting time doing this live, because that's how professionals do it. Uh, they do it on the spot. None of this editing... Being, uh, Mumbo jumbo. Yeah, we're at uh, seven kilometers, doing almost 200 meters per second. Burning through that fuel. Uh, the first step fires up those sepatrons, which help the tanks fall away uh, from the internal engines, which was a great add-on in point one seven. Uh, this rocket would not have worked otherwise, because it would have collided with the internal engines or with the with the aero spikes and such. Um, as you can see, I've got struts everywhere reinforcing this thing and it's still wobbling a bit but it's never been an issue and from my past experience these rockets should take it up to about uh, 1600 meters per second which I think if you knew what you were doing and when to turn and such you uh, could definitely get this into an orbit uh, and use the orbit gravity you know whatever how physics works to uh, go visit other planets that way uh, like I said, I made this as dumb, dumb proof as possible. I just fly it straight out of Kerbin's influence, straight, no orbit, and uh, once I'm in an orbit around Kerbal, I use the uh, the nuclear engines here to uh, get me where I need to go. You can burn these engines, all three of these, for like some 15 minutes straight uh, on these two tanks of fuel. It might even be more. I don't, I don't know for sure. They start to overheat at full throttle, but I run them about 50 to 75 percent, depending on what I'm doing. And I had, I got to jewel with over half a tank left on, uh, on this this last tank here before even detaching the lander. So I don't think it would be an issue for anyone that really knows how to play or how physics works to uh, to do a really nice mission and visit a couple planets with this thing. I'm not saying you could land on a few planets, but you could definitely go orbit them and you know take screenshots, do all that fancy mumbo jumbo stuff. Just waiting for these last two sets of fuel tanks to burn out. Let's check on our uh, our height here. Yeah, 
Yeah, nothing fancy, just a really powerful rocket with a ton of Delta V and uh, nothing better to do. The one hairy part is when I do separate these stages, and I probably should uh, add some Sepatrons here as well to help with that, but uh, I do have a slight risk of these larger tanks running into the aero spikes, but I haven't really run into that more than like once or twice, and about 50 times I've tried launching this thing. Uh, the bigger issue is getting those Sepatrons on the other stage to, to line up proper. Burning down on that fuel, coming up on uh, about 900 meters per second. I guess I'm going faster this time because I uh, launched towards the orbit, or away from the orbit around Kerbal. I don't really know, but uh, it doesn't matter, It's it's got the power to do it. So we'll separate that, fire up the aero spikes. Here's where I disable the SAS and just try to stop the spin and then try to steer the ship back on course. There's plenty of RCS to maneuver through space with this thing, uh, with the new RCS tank. It's pretty nuts. It's close enough to be on course. I'm not really too concerned with it. So yeah, so far we won't uh, we won't even hit the moon. But I'm sure if I stopped up here and, and made myself an orbit, I could use a gravity slingshot and go a lot further. But uh, again, I just tried to make this thing as foolproof as possible. So I'm gonna wait. And the way I designed it through many uh, explosive test flights was that. As soon as these run out of fuel, you should be on an escape trajectory and able to go visit uh, whichever planet you want. If you get lucky, you'll actually have about a half a tank of fuel left on on the last stage here. Use to your uh, your missions uh, your missions objectives. We just wait for these to burn out. Pick it up speed, 2.5 kilometers per second. Taking off during the daytime, better view. There, I could have visited the moon. Apparently, I will still visit the moon. I'm going to come pretty close to the moon. So now I'm just going to throttle her down. Yeah, there we go. Curb and escape. Done that before even achieving 400,000 meters from the surface. Uh, I've still got an entire last tank of fuel, plus some in the above stack. So pretty cool. Um, from my understanding, I'm going to come pretty damn close to the moon, so let's go check that out. Get acceleration to work. Probably going to come that close to the moon. Be able to see it. It should be that way. Hi, moon! Yeah, we'll just go into space. Reach that shape. Trajectory. And there we are. We are in orbit around Kerbal, and pleased to go wherever we feel. Um, I'm not going to do a whole mission on this. That's just the matter of fact that you have some fuel in this tank, an entire set of, of tanks here that are full and ready to go, three aero spikes, and then when you're done with that, you do have the uh, three nuclear engines and two gigantic fuel tanks with uh, 6,400 liters of fuel. Um, don't think that'll be too big of an issue. Be able to go wherever you want. Uh, it just takes you a while to get there because those nukes are pretty slow at thrusting. So, uh, yeah, thanks for checking out the ship. It's, uh, it'll be free to download on the Kerbal Space Program forums, and I'll definitely try to work on it and improve it. But for the time being, this will get you anywhere you want. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me, and uh, see you next time.